Hello, this is Andy Graham. Um, today I want to talk about the philosophy of tone of voice. And many of you realize that this is a repetitive uh, topic for Andy Lee Graham. Tone of voice, tone of voice, tone of voice. Tone of voice is a, there's a term called paralanguage. Paralanguage, which means the tone of voice. But as a world traveler, I don't need to understand the local language. It's almost unimportant for traveling worldwide. Just not that important. I mean, people think that they need to learn a language to travel. What you really need, in my opinion, is to understand body language and tone of voice, okay, and how things are spoken. But uh, BTW, body, tone, and words. I'm kind of calling this, by the way, you got to remember body, body language, tone of voice, and words, <laughs> okay, in that order, okay. But when a person gives us the finger, when they, when they give us your finger and they use profanity and anger, sarcasm, it amplifies communication. It's a powerful form of communication to really, you know, look at somebody, curse, and think. That's a form of communication, right? Um, effective communication requires a special understanding of ourselves and others, you got to understand yourself first before you can actually communicate. Um, as an example, um, it's always, you know, the best to listen, right? I mean, people that listen intently and really allow the other person to talk maybe 75% of the time and they only talk about 25% of the time. As a rule of thumb, too, anybody that's asking questions is controlling the conversation. So if you feel like a person drilling you over and over, they are actually controlling the conversation. But, okay, um, an angry tone of voice. Generally smiling and remaining silent is the best cor course of action when somebody's got an angry tone of voice. Uh, saying nothing is the answer. When met with no reaction, a person will often uh, seize their behavior. Uh, our initial feelings, our impressions, how we feel is seldom wrong. How we, how we first, this is what's amazing to me. Somehow the, the conscious mind and all these stereotypical views of the world has overridden common sense. I mean, even, even a deer running around can recognize when there's danger, right? Uh, but a human has lost the capacity in a lot of ways to uh, really just uh, do what an animal does think. We are an animal, and we have much better, more acute senses than an animal. We can recognize and smell problems <laughs> easily, but we somehow override it like everybody deserves the time of day. It's not true, okay? Not everybody deserves respect unless they give you respect. It's a quid pro quo. If they're respectful with you, then you owe them respect. You don't owe respect to people that are disrespectful, okay? And what is respect, though? Respect, in my uh, opinion, is when they got the body language is good, the tone of voice is good, <laughs> And they're, the way they say things is good. They're not saying it in a sarcastic, um, uh, sarcastic, angry, you know, prodding way. I mean, when people are asking those trick questions over and over and over, and you feel like you're being set up, stop talking. It's all you got to do is just, so 90% of the, the choices on the planet, or I mean, all the, how to deal with people is quite easy. You just stop talking. Okay. But uh, generally, it remains that. But when I'm experiencing um, a problem with angry tone of voice and body language is angry, uh, I'm always thinking of the parent, adult, child, eagle state. This is a, a book I read called I'm Okay, You're Okay. And you got the parent, adult, child. And what happens is in any kind of communication between two people, you have... Sometimes I'm the parent talking to the child. Sometimes I'm the, the, the child talking to the parent. Sometimes I'm the adult uh, talking to an adult. And that's not very common, <laughs> okay? But I don't really ever want to go into teacher or superiority. And this is what I was talking about yesterday. There's people that go into not just parent. They go into superiority. I'm an elite person, I have a better intelligence than you, and you have to listen. And that have to listen is the problem. That's kind of a macho thing, right? And anybody that demands that you listen to them, 
has no respect for people. Okay. But uh, a parent, maybe it sounds like my father or mother. An adult sounds like, you know, like the preacher at church or something like that. A child is like the kids on the playground. But in any relationship, there's um, some combination of parent to parent, adult to adult. There's some combination. I'm always, I've been cracking up. I've been studying a lot in philosophy. This is called the philosophy of tone of voice, para lengua, language. And, um, <laughs> you know, when I watch these stoic things, they sound like my grandfather, okay? And I go... Ah, it must really work that people will listen to their father, okay? But that's not really an adult conversation. That's a teacher, maybe, a professor, uh, child conversation. It's not really an adult to an adult conversation. So what they're doing is they're playing in a propaganda sort of way. They're trying to get you to accept that you should be trusting me because I'm quoting all these people and I'm saying all these uh Things in a rough father-like tone, okay? They don't have women doing this, right? Kind of interesting, right? But uh, people want to obey their father. They want to obey their mother. And you got to be real careful because that's a manip manipulative tactic. I'm trying to talk to you as an equal, okay? And don't get me wrong. It's, it's difficult to know which way to talk to somebody because sometimes I'm talking to a person that's acting childish and I have to go to an adult thing. Sometimes I'm talking to an extremely childish and I might go into parent. So I, I adjust my parent, adult, child. But really what I want to do with most people is talk as a child to a child. That's my ideal situation. That doesn't mean you have to do childish behaviors, but you can be childish, right? But by the way, by the way, that's the way you can remember this. BTW, by the way, body, language, tone of voice, and words. BTW, body is first because we observe the body language. I'm often laughing at the people that don't recognize that a person coming down the road with sunglasses on, black t-shirt, and a, a dog or two or three dogs is almost a violent form of uh, body language. You can, you can say that anything around them even a couple together. Body language isn't one person, it's the group of people. And nothing more dangerous than a group of people in a mob sense, okay? But look at the body language first. I always look at the body language first. And if I see, like a lot of times you see police walking in too, uh, too, almost an unfriendly way, right? And I walk on the other street. I walk on the other side of the street. I walk on the other side of the street when I see any Actually, anymore, when I see a woman with a dog, I walk on the other side of the street or I try to avoid meeting them. I have zero desire to meet people with dogs or sunglasses. If they got on sunglasses and they don't want to make eye contact, I don't want to talk to them. But these are my intolerances, okay? Everybody's got this idea that you're supposed to be tolerant of the world. And guess what? They can't even say hello to anybody that actually is friendly, okay? So the goal here is to optimize your life. You have to be able to sit there and look at somebody and say, how do I uh, extract or how do I optimize this situation so that the best of the best comes out of this person? There's people that got the, you know, they're, they're talking on their phone. They have no respect. They're very uncivil. But paralanguage is a, an easy way to do it in, in whatever. I'm going to define it right now. By the way, paralanguage refers to the nonverbal vocal elements of communication. Vocal. We talk, such as tone, pitch, and intonation. The modifying meeting, meetings and, and, and convey emotions. <laughs> Okay, I was laughing. I went into McDonald's yesterday, and the lady says, what do you want? <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. She had a frown on her face, and I go, this is not the goal of, of McDonald's. McDonald's is always funny because, like, uh, Europeans, when – welcome to McDonald's. When they say this, the, in, the Europeans often criticize McDonald's saying they don't really mean it. And I said, well – Yes, you're right. It's difficult for a European to be friendly. But in America, there's a lot of people, especially in the Midwest, that are just very capable of saying, hey, welcome. How are you doing? That's an easy way to do it. But uh, the intonation, the pitch, the tone. If you hear a sarcastic tone, an angry tone, I want you to stand silent. That's the goal. 
When a person doesn't engage you in a conversation or show inter- interest in befriending you, becoming your friend, it's best to say no or say nothing at all. Why would you enter into a conversation? See, qualifying a, a, qualifying a relationship is everything, okay? And if you want to travel the world, you've got to really quickly. I've learned to be very adept at paying attention to tone of voice because I often don't understand their language, right? So they might say say something. I, I, I'm always laughing at these guys that say in English, they say, Mr., Mr., and they're not saying it in a nice way. They're saying it in a sarcastic way. And I, I've often tried to explain to different people that if you say, hello, excuse me, sir, I'd like to ask you a question. I said, that's almost impossible to ignore from a respectable person. But they want to call me Mr. And I say, you're supposed to call me Mr. Graham. And these people don't learn English correctly, right? But often the their examples are somebody like a, a rapper or something like that. The rappers and the music and the the movie stars and everything are, have now become the worst possible examples of how uh, of human flesh. Okay, uh, right now our our heroes are criminals. Okay, it's like I don't know. Uh, Breaking Bad or something. I I won't watch these shows because it's not a good influence on myself. I choose what to be influenced. Um, But when a person doesn't engage with you in a conversation or show interest in becoming your friend, it's best to say no or say nothing at all. If someone needs to try to connect with words, if if someone needs to try to connect with words, gestures, or eye contact, when they do this, it's, it's, Im, it's implied that they, they are a caring person, a conscientious person. They're going to make eye contact. They're going to say uh, greetings, like, you know, neutral greetings. And they're going to. Now, always be careful. There's a f- eight-point conversation. Hello. How are you? Fine. What's up? Not much. See you later. Goodbye. It, it comes out about eight times. But when that's the average con- conversation... When the conversation lasts longer than that, the one of the two people wants something, and which is okay. On the other side is you got to really be careful, especially uh, anymore in this world, because a lot of people um, are so fear-based. Not me, okay? I, I will sit there and let anybody come up and ask me questions, okay, if they're respectful. If their tone of voice or their body language is bad, like they got a dog with them, they got sunglasses on, I'm not going to talk to them. I'm just going to say hi and pass on by. Um, I'm not going to give open the door because I'm qualifying the, the person, right? I'm qualifying whether they are a person that could be my friend. Okay, and this is where I don't understand people. They don't. You know, they don't even give it a second thought. Pretty much the default setting is we ignore everybody. Ignores everybody. Okay, and that's humorous. Okay, and um, you should never uh, ignore a bum, or you should never ignore anybody that's uh, asking you questions because that makes them dangerous. Okay, that disrespect is a dangerous thing to do. You can be very, very respectful without. And the art of living is how to be. Think. But some people are body body deaf, body language deaf. Tone deaf, word step. They can't even do it. They have no capacity to do it. So what are we going to do with these people that um, are walking around? Uh, They are actually become a non-entity in my world. Okay, And I want you to be intolerant of these people. There's way too many people on the planet to try to make friends out of everybody. You don't try to... The idea that you can change somebody and make them into a different person is just a, a really dysfunctional behavior it's it's in we can change our clothes we can change our pants we can't change other people so you have to accept people as they are and just let them be it's not our job to try to train them that's an intellectual anointed person who believes that they have the right to tell you how to talk I mean, they're making phrases and they're taking away our, we're becoming totalitarian state, an authoritarian state. They are trying to control the words that come out of our mouths. If a person wants to be racist, they want to be, they have that right, according to freedom of speech, to actually hurt somebody. No, they don't have the right to make somebody feel assault. 
but this this whole thing is growing, right? And they're what they're doing is they're going to get it to the point where we will not be able to talk with anybody. But uh, some people have no awareness of what's going on. Awareness of body language, tone, and words can help effective communication. Why? You got to be aware of what's going on. If you if you're not even moving your head around. Like, I, I actively seek people with higher intelligence. I'm looking for the quick eyes, the, the brains moving around, their heads moving around. Actually, children are often very intelligent when they're young, and I don't know who indoctrinates them and teaches them to be afraid of the world, but their parents are doing it. I'm often amazed at the, the, uh, the powerful nature of children because they'll talk to you, say, hello, how are you doing, and talk, ask you questions. And whatever, and then the, the mother's like looking at them like, don't be talking. Uh, there's nothing offensive about talking to another person. If you feel that smiling at another person is an insult, um, stay away from me. I think of you as trash, okay? I have no use for people that think that common decency is a ugly thing. I, I believe that this kind of uh, thinking is causing... The communities of the planet to break up. We are going to become a nation full of whatever I can get away with. Okay, whatever they can get away with is okay. That's where the trolls act, the cancel culture. This is all these people. People are getting on social networks just to attack. It's a dopamine rush to attack somebody that cannot t- attack back, and it's a sign of a wimp. A wimp is it's not an alpha male behavior to attack people that cannot attack back. An alpha male wants to get right in your face and say, hey, bud, I'm going to rip your face off. That's what an alpha male would do. But an alpha male is somebody that protects the group. Okay. Uh, being mindful of BTW, body, tone, and words. By the way, BTW, body, tone, and words, is a wise philosophy that leads to truth and understanding. Because you can't start on a philosophical journey on the, on the path to, to, you can't find truth easily in evil people. You can learn from them, but don't get me wrong. It's much easier to try to get uh, to talk with the people with the good intentions. There are good. There are people that have never in their life talked with somebody with common decency. They had parents that talked that way, so they're just emulating their parents. Sometimes I say, "Did your mother and father talk that way to you?" And they go, "Sometimes you can get them to take a pause." And you go, "Hey." I'm your friend. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm, I'm a safe person. We're just having a conversation. The conversation is a conversation is something to find agreements. And when you don't agree, you just uh, let it go. You don't. The job of a person isn't to overpower another person. That is a control freak. Okay, uh, but being mindful is wise. Another useful guide guideline. Um, Guideline is that if there's someone's intentions are honest and geared toward fr- French friendship, um, my I'm laughing. My Google, what do you call this? Uh, Grammarly was kicking in and making these things. Um, but to decline, a wise person chooses who they talk to, but they don't do it in a class system way. They don't do it in a status, I'm rich, you're poor, I'm superior, you're uneducated. That, that is anti-intellectual. That's, the, that's the, uh, the, the mindset of an idiot, okay? An idiot thinks that, that nobody, only certain classes of people have intelligence. All people are intelligent. People wonder why I go to Africa. They act like they're dumb or something. And I go, they're just as smart as us. They just don't have as much knowledge. And they didn't learn how to be mean to each other, okay? I don't know where people learn to be be mean to each other. This is my, this. I'm giving you some methodology, some philosophy on how to learn to qualify to have... Um, relationships that are valuable because why would we care to learn from an idiot an idiot is a mean snarky person that has great pride in being a troll a troll anybody that wants to celebrate 
uh, how they con somebody or how they hurt somebody or how they got over on somebody is an evil person. You don't need those people, especially the religious people. Uh, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? Um, even if there's no God, this is still great wisdom, right? Uh, Let's see, where did it say, being mindful, uh, just one life. There's only one life to live. There's way too many. Right now, it's not like the small community um, in the, you know, the prairies or something where you only had 30 people in the village and you had to be friends with everybody. It's now easy to pick and choose, and you should try to make everybody into a friend. I want you to try to make everybody your friend. But that doesn't mean... You try to force them to be your friend. If they they have bad body language, like a big freaking dog, like uh, I don't know what this, what some of these dogs are so huge that uh, I, I don't want them in my world, right? <laughs> I don't want to share my world with a dog, okay? Uh, they don't have any common de decency. But the reason why people like dogs is because they really cannot have a relationship with a human. They're not good at relationships with human. I have an overabundance of relationships with a human. I met this Olivia today at McDonald's, and I was laughing. She wouldn't stop talking to me. This was like a 24-year-old girl talking. I, I was just saying, I'm not really from the United States. I really don't understand how this, you know, this senior coffee works. And I wanted to know if I could get a refill. And she says, what do you mean you're not from the United States? She actually listened. I drop these things all the time. I'll drop little hints to my life child to see if the other person's listening. You can test the relationship. You can qualify. You can ask questions like, you can drop a little thing like, I don't live in the United States. Boom. Some people it thinks it's none of their business to talk. That's a person that doesn't really understand intellectually the acquisition of knowledge. Okay. Uh, but people who have been socialized to be selfish, okay? Um, there's no reason to entertain people that have a negative BTW. By the way, BTW, body language, tone of voice, and words. Just no obligation at all. The philosophy, okay, but the philosophy of ask, what is your philosophy on the tone of voice? I'm asking this as a question. I want to know how you could refine what I just said and make it into a more impactful lifestyle uh, way of dealing with things. We can always learn and we can always adapt. And guess what? There is no there is no rules here, okay? Other than you should really be careful of highly aggressive body language, like uh, like a motorcycle guy with a you know chains on his thing. Um, some people consider that love, though. Some people were raised in a motorcycle family where, the, you know, they had to be walking around with a chip on their shoulder to be considered a uh, man, okay, or, or a person of uh, good reputation. Um, everybody has a place in the world. And everybody has, if you truly believe that I, like I do, that everybody has something to say of value. I've never met a person that I couldn't learn from. I have met a lot of people, though, that I refuse to learn from because they are going to twist and turn and corrupt everything I say. And I always had this one guy in Lake Atalan. His name was Enos, and he was such a jerk. I said one day, Enos, there's just no way to talk to you. I'm going to never talk to you again in my life. And I did it. <laughs> I just stopped talking to him. And people were like, why are you not talking to him? I said, because he doesn't want to talk in a civil way. Um, why would I give my precious time? I only have one life. Why would I give my life to another person just... I mean, we're not even smart enough sometimes to realize that we're giving our life to uncivilized people. We're giving our time. If you don't have value for your time in your life... You're just like that person, okay? Qualify them by the body body language, the tone of voice, and the words they use. And if they're using these tricky words and they're trying to trap you and they're trying to check out whether you're, they're being pedantic or they're basically saying you're wrong and all this, you're wrong on this, and it becomes a competition, just say no. If you just say no, what's left over is going to be the best of the best people on the planet. Stick with the winners. This is what I'm talking about here. I'm trying to tell you how to find the winners in life. 
The winners are people that are very charismatic, happy, and, and joyful, and they spread kindness around and they attract people with their charismatic behavior. Um, a person walking around, playing on their phone all day, ignoring people, is close in my mind. I, I'm, I'm kind of debating right now whether or not we can actually teach people to become sociopaths and have no conscience. I think it's becoming a pandemic on the planet. But it's really high in the 25 overdeveloped countries. Most of the other countries, the 200 normal countries, there's about 225 normal countries and about 25 highly developed countries like Canada, USA, Western Europe, where they have learned, they are no longer civilized. Okay, I often say that I live in Indiana, a civilized state. But it's not just always everybody, right? Find your civilized people. Find civilized people to share your life with, and you'll have a good life. Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. I'm here, and you're not. Why not? Life is good, guys. Become a Patreon, and uh, that will give you kind of the inside way of getting to be able to talk to me one-on-one -on -one or personal and whatever, because that's the only people I'm really talking to other than my new friends that I meet and uh, my long-term friends. But uh, do any kind of sneaky stuff. And I say goodbye. Life is good, guys.